Welcome to Evening Prayer with the Stamford Methodist Circuit for Tuesday the 17th of September. During the course of this week of prayer and reflection, for our scripture readings we're making our way through the book of Jonah. It's one of the minor prophetic books in the Hebrew scriptures, the Christian Old Testament. The Methodist Church Prayer Handbook suggests the theme God of Compassion for this week's readings, and we shall return to that theme of compassion later. To call us into our time of prayer, we're using some verses from the psalm recommended for each day by the prayer handbook. Today, those words come from one of the most familiar psalms, Psalm 100. We're going to listen to it using the text of the New International Version of the Bible in a call to worship recording prepared by Salvos Studios, which is the media production team of the Salvation Army in Australia. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God and it is he who made us. And we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. If you shared in yesterday's offering of these daily prayers, you'll have heard me mention a comment made by the Reverend Tom Stocking in relation to the book of Jonah when it was the focus for the Methodist Church's Bible Month a few years ago. His comment is particularly relevant today as we begin to focus on what's probably the most familiar part of the book of Jonah. Tom Stuckey commented, We modern readers of the book of Jonah focus so much on the big fish that we fail to be amazed at the big God who is the prime mover in the story. Building on that comment, we noticed that one of the words most frequently used in the book of Jonah is a Hebrew word which translates as big or great. So as we share together, we seek to capture in our time of prayer that sense of being amazed at the big God who is the prime mover in the Jonah story. And the words of the prayer by Nick Fawcett, which will be a connecting thread throughout our prayers this week, relates to this. Let us pray. Mighty and marvellous God, however great we think you are, teach us you are greater. However high that you are higher, however loving that you are more loving still. Whatever we've learnt of you, may we recognise that we've barely begun to explore, let alone exhaust, the infinite riches of your grace and goodness, in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love of God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love of God is an awesome God. Our God
that extract from Hillsong's version of Rich Mullins' worship song, Our God is an Awesome God, leads us into hearing verses 11 to 17 of Jonah chapter 1. And for our readings this week, we're using the Gideon Films dramatised version of the text of the new international version of the Bible. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord. Oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O oh Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. There's a temptation to jump straight to focusing on Jonah and the big fish, or the whale as it's traditionally been rendered. But the big fish doesn't appear until the final verse of today's reading. There are important things to note from the preceding verses. The sailors are initially caught up in thinking what they can do to appease the gods who they believe have caused the storm to batter their ship. They want to appease Jonah's God. These sailors are far from unique. It's very easy for any of us to take a sort of plea bargaining approach to God. That if we want God to do something, we can make it happen by doing something for God, like making some sort of sacrifice. In this case, Jonah was the sacrifice that was offered. Indeed, Jonah willingly offered himself. Maybe he thought that drowning in the sea was preferable to living and therefore having to follow through God's call to go and preach to the mighty Assyrians in Nineveh. We note that the sailors tried to row back to land. It's as if they're trying to avoid having to throw Jonah overboard, but it's futile. Having Jonah thrown into the raging sea is God's way forward. Not because God wanted to punish Jonah, or for the soldiers to shoulder, or for the sailors to shoulder the blame, but because God needed to teach Jonah a lesson. Significantly, as these events unfold, the sailors themselves engage in conversation, maybe even in prayer, with Jonah's God. The fact that they're open to this is impressive in itself. It's sometimes said that there are no atheists in a lifeboat. In the face of the storm, or whatever crisis it might be, everyone believes in God. So despite Jonah having brought disaster upon them, it was the sailors who worshipped other gods, who did their best to show compassion and care for Jonah. The sailors' openness is quite a contrast with Jonah's closed, prejudiced and bigoted view of his God as being only concerned for his chosen ones and not caring at all about heathens and idol worshippers such as these sailors and the people of Nineveh. At this point in the Jonah story we can start to make connections with the ministry of Jesus in which it was often the outsiders who were more open to God's truth than the religious insiders in Matthew and Luke's Gospels, Jesus uses the sign of Jonah to pass judgment on the closed minds of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who were the Jonas of his time. As we hear this part of the Jonah story, we might find ourselves thinking forward to the Gospel stories, in which we're told that Jesus' disciples were caught up in storms, but the storms were calmed when they reached out to Jesus. The result of the calming of these storms 
is that the disciples were filled with awe and wonder. In the Jonah story, the sailors are also overawed, but their response goes even further. We're told that they offered sacrifices to Jonah's God, the Lord, and made vows to him. Jonah's action of trying to flee from God results in people being converted to believe in his God. All of this to note, and we've hardly mentioned the big fish. More of that tomorrow. The hymn recommended for today by the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook is Great is Thy Faithfulness, and it's sung for us by the Celebration Choir with the Sheffield Citadel Salvation Army Band. my refuge and my strength, a timely help in trouble. 
we give thanks with those whose time of trouble is past and who are richer and stronger for their experiences because they have found themselves or because they have found you. And we ask you to be with those in trouble now, people who've lost someone or something from their lives, people who have an incurable illness, people who are lonely or without friends, people whose lives seem empty. Be their refuge and strength, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today and every day, Lord, whatever life may bring, wherever and whenever it might be, help us to hear your call and to respond. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time of prayer and reflection with me today. God bless you.